What's up, Atarians? Toot, toot, it's time to ride the funk train. Now, 20 years ago, even more than, even more than that, I started a website with one goal in mind, and that was to promote the Atari 7800. Are you gonna be a jerk the whole time? Keep it quiet. And the one way that I wanted to do that was witty and kind of hip reviews about the Atari 7800. So we had one motto, and when I say we, I mean me. The website had one motto, and that was every game review. And back 20-something years ago, that was kind of easy to do. I went through the entire library in a couple of years with the help of Crossbow. You may know him as Ivory Tower Collections or Jesse. And we reviewed every game. But life happened. I got involved in pro wrestling and playing music for money and, and uh, starting a family and that type of stuff. So I got preoccupied. I would come in from time to time to update the, the website, but eventually it would fall away uh, by the wayside. Now, in 2020, I decided to resurrect it under the new moniker Atari7800forever.com because that sounds awesome. But at that point, every game was not reviewed. In fact, we looked... And when I say we, I mean me. There's 45 games that have been released on cart that we haven't reviewed. Now, most of them are very, very small run games, uh, limited releases, weird hacks, things that you're like, what is this? But there are a couple that you can actually still buy today that we need to review. So today we're going to do something called Five Easy Pieces. Why Five Easy Pieces? It's because... The only other five pun I could think of was Five Alive, and this one made more sense because these are going to be five games that aren't necessarily big, uh, and they maybe shouldn't warrant a full video review. So we're going to, these are some quick hitters. So without further ado, five brand new Atari 7800 game reviews. Hola, childs. It's time for Funk Master V's getting hip with the Atari 7800 with Funk Master V, musician. Ghost Hunter, Hat Flipper, Pro Wrestler, and Comedian takes you on a tour of all things cool about the Atari 7800. Are you ready to get your groove on? Because it's about to get funky up in here. So the first game we're going to review today is 2048. And I already know what you're thinking. Oh God, is this a math game? And unfortunately, yes it is. This program is by our good friend Muddy Funster across the pond, the British knucklehead that gave us EXO and so many other games that we're excited about. This is a, is a seemingly simple math game. It is a puzzle game. And basically what you do is you try to combine numbers until you reach the number 2048. So imagine, if you will, if you had a board and it's kind of similar to those like little uh, wooden maze boards and there's numbers on this board and you slide it left, right, up or down. And if numbers match like a four and a four, they will slide together and combine into an eight and the numbers increase. You gotta keep sliding the numbers around until uh, you get the highest numbers you can before there's no more moves. Every time you slide, there's, an, uh, there's another tile added to the board that's a number two, and you keep going until you hit 2048, or more than likely you get stuck somewhere because the higher numbers you get, the less spaces you have to navigate, and that's that's where the difficulty lies in the game. So, the game plays smooth as silk. Uh, the graphics are pretty rudimentary. Uh, they It kind of looks like Government Cheese, if Government Cheese was a, was a video game. There is no sound, but it is a stellar version of the game 2048. The problem with actually purchasing this title is... It's available for free on Google, and it's a fine version. You can look up 2048. Uh, Lewis did not invent this game. He's not a super mathematical genius. I guess not. Maybe he is. I don't know. But he didn't invent this game is what we're trying to say. This is just a port of that game. A very good one. A fine one. Uh, one that you may love to play over and over again. But figuring out why you'd want to purchase this game from Atari Age for $35, $40, I don't know. The box is cool, the gameplay is good. Uh, there are other things to buy with 40 bucks in my opinion.
pineapple. So if 40 bucks is too rich for your blood, cheap ass, there's a game that you can get on the Atari Age forums called Pineapple. And I know what you think. This has nothing to do with swingers. This is just a simple, lovely game by Chris Reed, the fellow that brought <coughs> Go Sub into the zeitgeist of Atari Land. Go Sub, pretty original maze shooter. Um, a really interesting slow game, but it's it's a good game. It's it's an interesting thing. You can check out our uh, review of that on Atari7800forever.com. But this game, I'm not sure if it came out before or after, but it's a step back. It's another simple game. In fact, this one doesn't require the button either. Neither did uh, 2048. This is just a simple dodge -em game. You start off as a pineapple and you end as a pineapple. And apparently these yellow things fly around the board. I thought they looked like banshees or, uh, I don't know, like a very, very yellow version of that evil guy from the Seventh Seal. They may do. Yeah, I didn't. Apparently these are bananas, and you just got to scoot around the screen until they get faster, and there's apparently a boss banana. Every second, you get a point, and then there's some papayas to pick up, and they sit there for a while, and uh, they disappear eventually. But you'll have ample time to go grab them. So basically, it's just a dodge em game. It's it's uh, I like how clean the menus are. I love how insipid our hero is. It's just a pineapple sitting there. Even the title screen says pineapple with a period. It knows it's not the greatest thing in the world. There's a two-player option, which, <clears throat> which allows two players to play at one time. One is a blue pineapple. Thank God it's not a blue waffle, or there really would be a lot of sexual innuendo in this game. Uh, but yeah, it's that's pretty cool if you got a friend that wants to do this. Uh, my biggest problem with the game, it seems like there's some difficulty unevenness. I mean, sometimes you start the game and one of the bananas is going 50,000 miles an hour. Another time you play the game, it starts off pretty slow. Seems pretty random, and I don't think that's fair when you're going for points. It's okay. It's simple. Uh, it's $25 and he ships it to you. Um, you know, it is what it is. It's not uh, rocket science playing uh, pineapple, but I don't know. There's certain things about it that are kind of cute. E.T. Book 7800. Let's do something completely different. How about the E.T. Book Cart? Yes, this, this game is available at Good Deal Games, and it's not really a game at all. Uh, it is another crazy-ass creation from gambler the the guy from germany named walter who creates odd 7800 carts and thank god for them because they're interesting to look at i'm just curious why et of all the things to immortalize is what gambler would want to go back and uh and make a shrine to et was a game that notoriously uh, led to the video game crash. Atari made some really stupid decisions. They made more games than there were consoles. It ended up, uh, ET, the E.T. games were actually buried in a New Mexico desert. Um, it was a debacle. They said the 1983 video game crash happened in part due to E.T. E.T. is not that bad of a game. And it's a lot better than the E.T. book card. What this is, is just several pages of trivia and, and things to know about E.T. There's an interview with Howard Scott Warsaw about E.T. in the game. Uh, you can also probably look that up on the internet, and Howard is not a camera shy guy. Uh, you can find probably this interview anywhere else if you search his name. There is a trivia game, um, and there's some rudimentary graphics but overall, this is a weird title. It's something a collector would want. Um, even the label art doesn't thrill me. But this is available at Good Deal Games for way too much money. A, a, a game like this, we don't normally rate it on a 1 to 5 scale because this is kind of like a prototype or a, a book cart. On that scale, we normally have a must-have rating. Curious Oddity 
or a dud. The ET book cart is a dud. Shoot the UFO. Speaking of duds, the next game's called Shoot the UFO. It came out in 2015. This game is available, I still believe, on a uh, Good Deal Games. Um, a couple weeks ago, I asked Silverback, John Stoll II, uh, Atari Pro Gamer, whatever the hell he's going by now, to help me start uh, catching up on some of these 7800 games that... Uh, we haven't reviewed, and he did a, a review of Meteor Shower. Now, Meteor Shower is a version of Astro Blast for the Intellivision. I would have rated it a little higher than John did, um, but it got a pretty weak rating. It was, uh, I think he gave it a 2.5 out of 5. Uh, and this game, I think, is a hack of. Meteor Shower. So we're talking about a hack of a game that scored a 2.5 out of 5. Okay, in this game you can see the graphics aren't nearly as good as Meteor Shower was, and uh, the rocks all start, they all uh, have the same color. The, your, your protagonist ship looks like a kind of a weird brown and yellow pagoda. The UFO looks like Nader, or at least it looks like it has Nader's eyes uh, from Cars. Uh, and the background does not move at all. It doesn't look, it just is static. I don't know, the perspective of this game is not great. I don't know if we are on the ground. I don't know if we're flying through space. But these rocks keep flying at you. Some of them you can't destroy. The goal is to shoot the UFOs, and man, you're shooting a lot of them. And by the way, they're not shooting back, so I wonder if they're good guys. Are we the tyrants in this game? I don't want any... I'm a libertarian. I believe in peace. I'm not down with that. If we were defending something, yes. I, I know I'm looking way too into this, and this is a game by Breck Brixic. Uh, Br Breck Brixius, Breck, Br uh, which may be the coolest name of all the programmers, and there's a cool, there's a there's a few good good names of the Atari 7800 programmers, but Breck Brixius is is a good one. Uh, but this game is not a good one. It's very repetitive. It doesn't escalate. When the game ends, it goes back to the title screen. This seems like a test more than anything else. There is some decent sound, which, but most of it sounds like it was either copted from uh, Asteroid 7800 or Meteor Shower. Um, very, very skippable. If you did not like Meteor Shower, John, Shoot the UFO is not for you. Uh, if you loved Meteor Shower, then this game, I don't even, you just play Meteor Shower. This game was a project from somebody who was learning how to program for the 7800. It doesn't feel like a finished game. It's out there as a finished product, and technically I guess it is, but uh, it's not very good. Sick Pickles. So the last game we're going to review today is the one over my shoulder. It's also by Breck Brixius. It's called Sick Pickles. Sick Pickles is another game where you don't even need to use the damn button. Why do we even put those things on there? This is a Dodgem game similar to Pineapple, but this is a port or reimagining of a game called Fast Food. And for some reason, there's a ton of these games. There's a Fast Food on the Atari Jaguar. There's a Christmas version of that same terrible game. And there's a game called Fat Axel, which is making fun of the Guns N' Roses bloated lead singer but i think sick pickles for some reason and i really i'm not intelligent enough to tell you why this is my favorite version of the game there's something about the graphics that are real clean i like the sound effects that it uses this is not a game that's going to blow your mind like ricky and vicky this is an exo this isn't baby pac-man but this is a fun pick it up and horse around with it for a little minute game where you are a mouth with janky ass teeth, by the way, eating food, and you gotta avoid the poisoned or the sick pickles, which are purple, and only eat the green ones. And that's a good uh, that's a good that's a good rule to go by in real life as well, especially if if you haven't been in the back of your fridge in a long time. There are some interesting options. He did this with Alpha Race too. You can change the mouth color from blue to pink um 
Blue is always bad, by the way, if, if you're if you're an EMT. Chew speed can be fast or normal or slow. And again, that's your personal preference. Mouth animation can be three cell or two cell. And the level can be fast or crazy or let's see, normal. Also, not used is listed for some reason. And if you have the cart, which you can pick it up at his Etsy store, you can put in your high scores. See, right behind me, high scores to, I guess, impress your friends. The other thing about this game that I think is kind of cute is after you eat a bunch, uh, there is a message that comes up, something like, hey, you're freaking fat. And the level speeds up a little bit. And I think, I don't know where Breck Brixius is from. I think he's probably from Europe. I think this, he's taking shots at Americans. He knows Atarians are mainly Americans. So this is a way for him to make fun of fat America. And uh, my hat's off to you. And if I had to pick my favorite of the bunch, it would be, be between this one and, and 2084. Uh, so there you have it. Five quick, bam, bam, bam. Uh, reviews for the Atari 7800. Uh, my friend John Stoll, Crazy Silverback, whatever the hell he, he goes by. He's doing a bunch of games from um, Carl Otto Jr., better known as Franco Dragon, and he's doing another quick hitter uh, uh, review of those. So we will have uh, this list hopefully knocked out in the next 50 years, uh, but we're getting close. So make sure you check out uh, my channel, Big and Funky Productions, we have a lot of live broadcasting, Tubi Movie Night, uh, The Existence and Fall of Great American Wrestling, Wrestling with Ghosts, all with live chats, and of course, the Atari Network podcast. It's the hottest podcast about Atari going. Check it out every other Friday night at 7.30. All these shows are at 7.30. So make sure you like and subscribe and hit notify because I'm telling you, the YouTube algorithm hates my guts because we're doing sports. We're doing horror movies, we're doing comedy sketches, we're doing paranormal stuff, we're doing uh, video games. It doesn't know what to do with my channel, so I need your help. Please, like, subscribe, engage, notify, power to the people, don't delay.